So in this video, we're going to use GeoGebra to construct perpendicular bisectors of a triangle. And we want to just see what is this special property that it gives us. So in the previous video, we did perpendicular bisectors of a segment. And we used the circle tool to accomplish that. Um, so I would have clicked, say, if we took x, y, I would click x first, then y. Then I would click y first, then x. and I would take my point tool and find the intersection of these two circles. We would then draw a segment connecting those two intersections. And then we would put a point on X, Y right there. And we say that what we've created here is a point C, which is the midpoint, and a segment CB, which is perpendicular. So this is the perpendicular bisector. But you can see how busy the drawing's getting after just doing one side. I have to do two more sides. There's going to be a lot of circles, a lot of segments. So we're going to use the shortcut. We discussed how perpendicular bisectors were constructed in the previous video. But now that we know how they're constructed, we're going to use the shortcut. Let me hit undo and get all of this out of my screen. If we go to our segment uh, or line tool, uh, there's two different sets of line tools. The second one here has an option for perpendicular bisector. And we say, well, if I choose that and I click on the line, it gave me the perpendicular bisector. If I choose the next side, it did it again, and the third side again. So this is much cleaner for our drawings. We don't have all these circles all around. But understand that in the background, GeoGebra is doing all of that work with the circles and finding where to draw the perpendicular bisectors. Now we're using the shortcut because we're moving on to more advanced topics. We're going to choose the intersect button and put our intersection of these three lines. And that is something that we want to make note of. All three perpendicular bisectors meet in the same point A of the, uh, in this drawing, in this construction. And this point has a special name. Uh, it is a point called the circumcenter. And it has a special property to it as well. If I take the circle tool and I click point A first as the center of my circle and I go to point Y as the distance, well, the circle not only passes through point Y, notice that the circle passes through X and Z as well. This circle passes through all three points of the triangle, the three vertices. And we can now play around with this and say, let's move something around here. If I move one of the triangle points around, we see that now my intersection point is in the exterior region of the triangle. I see that I could make it land on the triangle. And I'm going to ask you, what type of triangle do you think this is where the circumcenter lands on the triangle? Or if I keep moving it, it goes inside of the triangle. So you should be able to explore with this and figure out when does it land on the triangle, when is in the interior of the triangle, when is in the exterior of the triangle. So the circumcenter is the center of our circle that creates a circle that passes through all three points. That means that point A is equidistant from X, Y, and Z, because the radius of XA is the same radius XZ, and it's the same radius XY. And we say, well, why is this so important to identify this? Well, imagine you were doing civic planning and X, Y, and Z are cities that you want to be able to service from A, whether A is a fire department or a hospital, or maybe it's a cell phone tower. Well, you have found the perfect location to put A so that it's equidistant from those three cities that you want to be able to service with whatever you're providing. So, Civic planning is one thing. Uh, there could be other applications, but wherever you need to find a center that is equidistant from three points of interest, then we would use the perpendicular bisectors of the triangle, find the circumcenter, and then we've got um, the location that is equidistant from the vertices.